Shrinkflation is gross. I don't normally talk about current events, but I was so disappointed when I found out that Betty Crocker had shrunk their box cake mix from 18 to 13.25 ounces, and they still expect it to make the same size cake. What? How they did it, I don't even want to know. But it's terrible. There's really no other word for it. I don't like being critical, and I do hope Betty Crocker does something to make it right. But in the meantime, I'm done giving them a dollar until they fix it. That said, almost everyone needs to have a box of quick and ready cake mix you can whip up at the last minute with just water, oil, and eggs. So instead of finding a clever way of doctoring up Betty Crocker's, I decided to make my own box cake mix instead. It took a little bit of experimentation, but I think I've come up with a really delicious mix. With quality ingredients and a few unique gourmet twists, you'll have a box of delicious, fluffy, sweet cake ready in minutes. So let me show you how I did it. It all starts with really high quality cake flour. I use King Arthur unbleached cake flour because I love that it's unbleached. If you don't have cake flour, you can totally use all-purpose flour, but the cake won't be quite as tender and fluffy. There is a way of turning all-purpose flour into cake flour by adding cornstarch, so if anyone wants to know how, leave a comment below and I'll totally show you. Then it's time for sugar. I use unrefined cane sugar because of its rich flavor. Next is the first secret ingredient that really elevates the flavor of the cake, powdered buttermilk. Most dry cake mixes use powdered milk, but buttermilk has a delicious tangy flavor that really makes a difference. Even if you've never used powdered buttermilk, it's very easy to find. You can get it at almost any grocery store. My favorite is made by King Arthur. It has great flavor and you can buy it in a larger package than most. Next is baking powder. And because of that acidic buttermilk, you'll want to add a touch of baking soda as well. A bit of salt, and then it's time to add the final secret ingredient. That will take your cake to a whole new gourmet level, vanilla beans. That may sound a little indulgent, and it is, but it's totally worth it. And I will show you a trick to maximize the amount of flavor you get from each bean. It starts with very high quality, grade A vanilla beans. And where you source them really matters. There is a huge difference in quality between vendors and a lot of sketchy sources out there. So. I always buy mine from the same place to make sure they have been stored properly and sourced responsibly. Slow Food Group has been my favorite for years and I highly recommend them. I'll put a link below where you can buy their beans. I use grade A vanilla beans. If you're not familiar, grade A beans are great for using directly in a recipe. They're moister, fresher, and softer. Grade B are great too, but they are much drier, which is actually a good thing for making extract, just not great for baking. And then there's splits. Splits are extra dry and often slightly damaged or broken. Whatever grade you choose, here's the trick. Use the whole bean pod, the whole thing. If you've ever scraped a vanilla bean, you may notice it's almost impossible to get all the beans scraped off the pod. It's fine if you're gonna use the pod to make your own extract, but did you know that you can use the entire vanilla bean pod when you're baking? Wow. Most people don't know it's how vanilla bean powder is actually made and it's super easy. I will show you how. First, if you use grade A or B, you'll need to dry them out a bit. High quality vanilla beans are very moist, so you will need them a bit drier to pull this off. Unless you use splits, they'll be dry enough already. So just place them in a single layer on a cookie sheet with either parchment paper or foil at 125 degrees for 90 minutes. If your oven doesn't go that low, you can just set it to its lowest setting and leave the door open, cracked, open just a little bit, and pop a thermometer on the tray with it to keep an eye on things. Once they're cooled, cut off the ends and chop them roughly in about one inch pieces. Then pop them into either a spice grinder, if you have one, or I just thrifted a coffee grinder for just grinding spices. Just make sure it's a blade coffee grinder, not a burr coffee grinder. Even dried, vanilla beans will gum up a burr grinder, so look for the propeller blade type grinder. Grind them into a fine powder and then sift to remove any large pieces. You can always return those to the grinder for another pass if you really want to maximize your results. That's it. It may seem odd at first, but as long as it's finely ground, there is a ton of flavor in the pot itself, and it's the best way to get the biggest bang for your buck. Vanilla beans are undeniably a little pricey, but absolutely worth every penny, so it's nice knowing you've squeezed every penny out of them. Now it's time to add your vanilla bean powder to your cake mix. 
it's potent stuff, so a teaspoon is more than enough to equal about a tablespoon of extract. I'm not one to sift very many things, but I do recommend you sift things together in this case, mostly because the buttermilk powder tends to want to clump together, so it really helps to get a smooth consistency later. You won't need to sift it again later, just once to get everything equally distributed. And you're done. Time to package up your cake mix for a rainy day. You can store them in any airtight container. Mason jars are adorable if you want to give them away as gifts, but I really like using reusable silicone bags like these. I've put a link below if you're interested in these specific ones. And to finish things off, I label my bags with the recipe for finishing the cake. Just like Betty Crocker's, all you need is water, oil, and eggs. And what's great is you can make white or yellow cake with this recipe. For white, use oil. For yellow, swap it for butter. That's it. I've posted all the measurements and instructions for baking in the description below. I know you can't actually copy and paste descriptions here though, so to make things easier, I'm happy to DM you the recipe and instructions for easier use. Just follow me and comment recipe below and I'll message you. Also, if you want to have more fun flavors of cake mix on hand, I've developed several more like funfetti, chocolate, and even spice cake. So visit my wall for more or I've put a link below, so check it out. This is a video I wish I didn't even have to make, to be honest. And while nothing would make me happier than Betty Crocker changing its mind and making things right, at least you can have an easy and delicious cake in case of an emergency.